Hello guys, my name is Joel Mukania. I'm a CEO and founder at JT Devs. For today's video, we're going to cover some lessons uh, on TypeScript. All right. So what is a TypeScript? It is a superset of JavaScript. What do we mean by that? Um, so a short version will be, uh, it's actually a better version of JavaScript. Okay. And then uh, it's also a object. It's also an object-oriented programming language. And uh, with TypeScript, only you write a code on TypeScript. Yeah, so it's it will not going to run on the server, neither on the browser. So we need to transpile it to JavaScript. So transpile means that we need to uh, compile it or convert it to JavaScript. Okay, so the first step that we have to do before we start coding in TypeScript, we have to, we must install Node.js, or if uh, you have already used some framework, then you can use your framework like your Angular. Okay, so I'm just going to check if I do have uh, Node.js so install on my system, dash V, I believe uh, it's node. Okay, just node. 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 Yes. Just node. Okay. So and then once you install node JS, it's come with uh, its package management, uh, which is stand for the NPM. NPM stand for node package manager, or management. Or the thing it will be manager. Mm, so we have to check if uh, we do have it, and then we say dash v. Okay. So if uh, you can see the version, meaning you do have it on your system. Now let install TypeScript. You can go to TypeScript website. Uh, I'm just going to uh, see how I'm going to install it on on my system. I'm just going to. Copy it. So if uh, you use uh, dash uh, G, it means that it's going to install it globally on your system. So I don't want to install it global. I don't want it to be global on my, uh, to be installed globally on my system, if you get my point. So I'm just going to, because I'm already, I'm using Angular so So if I want to use uh, the code in day, then I can just, use it in Angular, but since uh, we're focusing on TypeScript lesson, it's only going to be TypeScript. So on this case, we have to install it. Then we'll say npm install TypeScript. Okay, npm install TypeScript. Then if uh, we want the latest one, then you can use uh, add latest. But I um, believe I'm just going to remove it and just going to leave it as it is. And then we install it. So it's been added. So I'm going to check if uh, I do have it. So what the heck? So my system requires me to use node dash JavaScript. So I cannot find the um the compiler. So let me just run this one here. Just going to put a pause. Come on. 
Hello guys, welcome back. I'm done installing TypeScript. Let's check for its version. All right, so we do have it on our system. Okay, I'm going to create a file. I will create a file called basic.ts. Uh, then let's open it on Visual Studio Code. All right, so uh, there's also a terminal on Visual Studio Code in case you want to run it on Visual Studio Code. You can do that as well. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is to create uh, a variable. So let's see how we can create a variable. Okay, so I have some example in here. I'm going to make use of late. Okay, so you still understand, you still you still remember um, the difference between late, so bar, and const. So const is when you want to create uh, a constant variable. Late is just going to, to allow you to uh, reinforce uh, um, the variable scope okay now we say letter on uh, number one column that we specify the data type which is number okay this is how we can create uh, a variable in top script so if uh, you want to assign it a value then you can say maybe seven okay then Let's see how we can create a, st a string. Then we we'll say maybe name, let name column string equals to uh, letter. Okay. Let me see how I create a string. Does it give me an error? Okay, so seems like a uh, name. It's been uh, it's you uh, it already it's been already declared uh in put in with uh, TypeScript itself. So uh, we can just say user name. Okay. I was going, or oh, maybe we can just say first name. I'll be fine. Okay. And then we say letter is female. Colon boolean. Then we say equals to. Uh, a bit true. Mm, subject. Subject. It will be array of string. Then equals to. Uh, JavaScript. Okay, so let's check what else, like uh, object. Uh, if, uh, so another way of creating an array, you can also do those. For those, I'm just going to copy it. Let me just stop it. Say uh, names. Say array. 
uh, believe array, then you do those, so, and then you specify what data type will be stored in there. So, since it will be a string, then we do that. And we use this, and we can say um, picture and some and so on. Okay, and also for your object, you can say my blade person details, uh, then we say colon object. Okay, this is how we can create a variable in TypeScript. So, first, uh, you specify the keyword like letter, either letter or const, then after that, uh, your variable name, then what comes next is going to be the colon. So after colon, it means that you need to specify a data type. All right. Then you can, uh, so this is just uh, optional to assign the value once you create a variable. So if you create a variable, then later on you can assign a value to it. It's not a problem. Okay. So now, what we're going to do, let's try to uh run it to say maybe console.log then we're trying to display number one and then we'll do the same thing for the rest of variable then we have first name first name yeah. is human subject names then we have person person detail I'm gonna say maybe person details uh Dot name and question and so like this and so name so maybe First name, uh, uh, picture, last name, uh, uh, job. So we save it. So let's try the first thing. The first step will be to compile it. Okay, so let's try to compile. We say TS, TSC, then the file name will be basic.ts. Then we run it. Then it will actually produce a JavaScript file. Okay, here we go. We have a JavaScript file. So you see. So the Java so this is going to be the version of JavaScript. So with JavaScript you just remove the data type and then you see. Now from here we can just type uh, node uh, node then we say basic.js we, we are not going to say basic.tabscript or ts it's not going to run 
but I'm gonna check it to see what we get. So here's the response that we, we got. So I believe you won't be able to see it clearly. So we say node space basic dot uh, js. So here's the result that we got. Okay. Then they try to run and then say node dot ts and then let's see. <laughs> There we got an error. Okay, because uh, um, we uh, top top script is not yet support or is not support and uh, on to run it on the server. Okay, so we first have to come uh, transpile it uh, to the JavaScript in order to run it to see the content. Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's try to create uh, an example using enumeration and top script. So to create an enumeration, so first, what is enumeration? An enumeration is just uh, a variable with a constant value. Okay. So to create an enum, it's short for enum, then we can say color. Uh, be able we need to make use of the okay, key like it. Then we can say maybe blue, comma, orange, comma, yellow, red, and black. Okay, that's it. Then we can say console.log. Uh, color dot blue. So this is how we can access uh, its venue for blue. And then they do the same thing for the rest of the color, maybe three colors. Okay, I believe this one is enough. And what next? So there we have uh, orange. Orange, also orange, we have yellow, then that's it. So, as we did earlier, so let's try to transpile it to JavaScript. To do that, we say TSC base, the file name is basic, basic dot TSC uh, dot TS. Then we press enter. Uh, we just have to be patient for a bit. Come on, come on. Here we go. Then we can say node space basic dot js then we see that the first value was zero but if we don't want a to start okay first just see what we done on top script yeah, now what have a look what we done on top script so how many line do we have for this particular block so I believe we have about a six or seven. So this three, five, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So we have seven lines of code for this piece of line uh, to create an enum. So let's have a look at JavaScript after we transpire it to JavaScript. So what is that short? Like I say that. Uh, Java, uh, top script is a superset or it actually a better version to create a better version of JavaScript. So let's see, let's compare those two. So look here now, we have uh, uh, JavaScript, the, uh, I long it is particular code, let's see. 
So you have to do those. But in TypeScript, it's simple. Set to the point. All right. Then, uh, like another thing that I wanted to specify is, uh, in case you you don't want to start from zero, you want to start from one. You can come up in here and uh, reassign it to one. Then the second one, the second value will be two, and so on. Then we save our work. We go back to. Then we have to compile it again. Because if we don't, it's still going to remain with the previous value. Okay. We run it, and then we just have to wait for a bit in order for us to run it uh, in. So we need to run the JavaScript file now. Now you see the value become one, two, three. Okay. Welcome back. So let's see how we're going to con uh, we're going to be able to convert uh, convert uh, um, a integer value or a number variable uh, a number to a string. Okay. Then let's see, let's create first uh, a integer value, we say num1, num1 colon, we will do the top of number, then we assign a value, maybe this time will be 17. Then we have to convert it to a string. Then we say console.log. There we say number num one dot two string. Okay, bingo. So let's run it again. Okay, so let's have a look at our value. I see it's 17. So you can have a look. I understand. It's awesome. Okay. Hello, guys. Welcome back. So, in this example, let's see how we're going to create a function in TypeScript. So we're still going to use a keyword function, say addition, then we have num1 column, then we specify a data type of number to make sure that the user pass only number, and then num2 column, uh, it's also a number. So, in this case, we're just going to return the value. We say return num1 plus num2. Okay. Yeah, we can say console.log. There we have uh, addition. And then we have to pass a value. So we can pass 8 and 7. And then another benefit of TypeScript is to allow us to know when the error occurred during the development time. So when you are busy coding, then you can see where the where the error is, especially if we're using Visual Studio Code, it will actually highlight uh, in red or under, uh, underline in red on that particular section to tell you that uh, that there is an error somewhere, uh, there's an error on it. 
Okay. So now let's see. We can run it, and then if uh, I try to pause a string, then it will give me an error. So maybe J, and then we have M. So you can see it actually put the under, it's actually underlined on that particular variable to say that, oh, this is an error. Okay, let's try to put the mouse on top of it to say. Argument of top of string is not assignable to a parameter of top of number. Okay, let's see. So it will tell you straight to the point instead of you to run the program to see the error. Okay, so that is also one of the benefits of TypeScript. Then we have the result. So we can uh, compare it with uh, JavaScript. So with JavaScript, you see it doesn't specify any data type. So in this case, you're going to get in there, uh, especially if uh, you have to use it on the production side, and then to, if the user posts uh, the value of string, it will try to concatenate it. So what if uh, you have to store it in a database and that database of uh, colon was expecting an integer, then that is where the error will occur. Okay. All right. And then I'll see you in a bit. So let's see. Hello guys, welcome back. On this example, we're going to see how we're going to create a class in TypeScript. Okay. So the first thing, we have to make use of keyword class. Um, okay, so I need to create a new file. Uh, percent or TS, and then we can plus call person. Uh, let's create a constructor. So this constructor will take an argument. Um, so we can say maybe uh, first name. A string. Oh, let me use that. Okay. Then let's create an attribute. This is going to be an attribute. Then we say, uh, username, color, string. Then to actually uh, point to this particular uh, attribute, we have to say this dot username. Okay, equals to username. Okay. Then let's see what else. Right. Then we need to create a method that will allow us to return the get value. Oh, to return the username. So we'll say get user name 
something else. So turn this dot user name. All right. So in order for us to create uh, to create an object, let's create an object. We say let person one equals to new person, and then in here we need to post the value. Then we can say maybe yeah, uh, and then we say console dot log. Uh, person one dot get username. Okay, so so if we try to say, uh, okay, I can see that we have uh, a username here because we don't. It's for a, a good practice. We need to make it as private. Then to make it private, we just have to come up here and say perfect. Believe this one should. Be. Then since it's private, then we should not be able to see it via an object. Okay, so only the method. And then finish it. So there we go. Then now let's uh, convert it to TypeScript. Then we we'll change this file name to person. And then we we'll press enter. Okay. And then so another one. Then this will be person, and then press enter. Then we see the name Erato. Let's have a look. And then here's how it's how to create a class will be in, in JavaScript. Okay. And then we can also Let me check if there, there is something that I can just I'm just going to move this example of a person in another file and another folder. Then we just create a folder and say this will be close. Then press it. Yeah, and then I'm just going to check if uh, okay. we're done with close. On this video, we're going to talk about uh, inheritance. So, what is inheritance? Inheritance is just uh, to say that to make a copy of one features which is which are public or protected into another class. I'm going to give you a particular example. It's going to be the relationship between a parent and a child. So most of the of, of most of the feature of a set of a, of a child is composed based on their parents or grandparents. Those are the relationship that we see in our life. That is the same thing apply in object oriented programming. Then let's talk about the uh, access modifier. So the access modifier we have a uh, private, uh, public, and protected. So when you create your feature, your class feature as private, it means that you only want to use it within your class, not outside of a class. So any other clause that we inherit, that specific clause, so, uh, it's not going to have access on those private features. But if it's public, then every, every class, all classes can be able 
able to access those fabric features. What about protected? Uh, protected, it's going to be, it's a gap between uh, private and public. So with protected, we only want to give access to the child classes. Only the class that inherits from a specific class, then they're going to be able to access those uh, protected features. So that's why, on my case, if I'm working with a class, or which is going to be like a parent class, most of the time I apply and make use of protected. So I'm going to use protected on those attributes. So even though this is a private, uh, it's not a problem. So let me make it private, but the method is going to be protected because I only want the child to have access to it. So let me give it, make this one to be private. To say first name, which is going to be SJ. Uh, last name, and then private user age. It's going to be a number. Okay, so let's create a constructor. So we're going to pass our first name as a string. And then last name as string as well. And then the last string to be user age as number or integer. Okay. So we say this dot first name equals to first name uh, this dot last name equals to last name this dot user age equals to user age And what else? And then we need to create some protected method. Uh, protected method. So we say get first name to return a first name. So we say return this dot first name. Protected get last name return those are dot last name and then the last thing it will be protected. Okay, it's a uh, user age. We have the return the results of user age. All right, so that's it. So we then uh, uh, implementing a person class. Then let's go to employee class. So on the employee class, what we're going to do, we're just going to say class employee extend. We need to make use of the keyword extend, which it means that uh, we actually, uh, we want to uh, inherit from a person class. Okay. So once that is done, so we're going to have uh, this class employee is going to have its own attribute which will be private uh, rate as number 
of perfect hours also be using numbered at the top. So let's create its constructor. So we can, on this constructor, we're only going to pass a rate. And uh, we're going to pass hours. Right, so let others say this dot rate so equals to rate, and then this dot hours equals to hours. Right, so we see that, that we're still having some errors. The errors come in because uh, we didn't call the constructor of the parent class because we extend from person and that person has uh, uh, some construct uh, has a constructor so if uh, I comment it then there will be no error in here there shouldn't be an error okay let me save it okay another uh, on another on another note uh, object oriented programming um uh, has something called it's going to create a default constructor for us since we don't have a constructor you see so a default constructor it's a, it's a constructor without an argument so I believe that is the error that uh, it's actually pointing because I didn't call that super so now to call the constructor of this of the parent class we need to use a keyword super and then you see that it is expecting us to pass uh, the value for that uh, parent class. We're going to pass uh, the value later on. Uh, just an example. And then send name David. And then age will be 30. Okay. And then that's it. Then the error is done. So let's create a method that will allow also to Calculate the salary. Okay. Calculate the salary. Then we say return this dot rate times this dot hours. Dot hours. Okay, that's it. And then we need a method to display those results. So display. Then this one, we're just going to print it on the console. Then we say this one will be, uh, we have to display the name. Then we say dot concat, so that we can be able to pass other values. So, so in here, we're going to call, uh, we're going to call this, we say does dot get so look here so in this class of uh, employee we don't have uh, a method called does dot first name yeah so by using extend it allow us uh, to make a copy of the public or protected feature into this uh, employee class so that we can be able to access it okay there we do this there we go, new line. Oh my, it does something. Let's say new line. Then we can specify surname. The new line. This dot send last name. And then after that, we have age, comma, and then this will be the side of user age. And then after this one, what next?
uh, look for good in your life. Right here. Sure. Then after this one we have a salary. Okay, so username it's returning an integer. We need to convert it to a string dot to string. Then we say this dot calculate salary. And then this one also we need to convert it to string. And then that's it. All right, so now let's create an object. Okay, let me scroll up for those that are trying to tap this one on their computer as well. So we have classes of employee, which is trying to inherit from person. Then we have attribute for a rate and hours. And then on the constructor, we're passing only rate and hours. All right, then inside of this constructor, we're calling the parent constructor so that we can be able to pass its value on the child. Okay, so we're passing the Rato, David, and TT for age. Okay, so we have a method called calculate salary that will return the salary of the user based on the rate and hours. Then after that, we have a method called display whereby we want to display uh, the user, the person information. Then also of this class, we need to create uh, an employee object. Create, uh, uh, create an employee object. We'll say later imp one equals to new employee then in here we're just going to pause uh, the rate as the first argument second argument will be hours then the hours will be 40. and then that's it then once we done that uh, we say imp one dot display okay and then that's it so one more thing i believe uh, we're going to encounter an error I'll tell you why. So let's try to to uh, to compile the employee of uh, file. It's a TSC employee that will run it. So let's see. Okay. So we got some error. It said that. Uh, uh, it didn't find the main issue is because it didn't find the file name or the class name or person name. Okay, so to solve that, uh, we there's something that we have to uh, make sure that we cover first is uh, um, the keyword export. So we need to say export in here to say that make this class available in our in uh in this uh make it available so that we can use it anyway so we export this class and then since we export this class uh, then we need to import it from here we say import we use the carry by get then we say person and then we say form uh, since it's actually on the same uh on the same location then we say does slash a uh, person okay to import a file person then inside a person file then we point to the person okay now by doing so then we should not if we run it again there will be no error let me try again okay there was no error so now we can just say node employee.js and 
finger. We have our information. Okay. So if you want to create the, the, the second employee, then you need to add another method called set that will set the user to provide the new name, uh, new surname, and age, so that we can have uh, uh, each employee must have uh, their own information. Okay, I believe uh, that was clear. If you guys have any questions, just place your comment on the place your question on the comments section. Okay, thank you guys. Bye for now.